on this episode of Counting Cars. I've got Pawn Stars Rick and Corey coming by for a special project. This is amazing. <laughs> nice car, man. Can we take a look at it? I think he thinks we're a little bit crazy. Should we bag it? No. <laughs> really got an extensive collection of tattoos. I would really like to apply that to my bike. Do we have to take naked pictures of you? Vegas is a gambling town. Most people bet with chips. I bet with rides. Look at this. And I always go all in. Wow. What would you take for this? I'm Danny, AKA The Count. And this is my all-star team. We find them, fix them, flip them, and sometimes I keep them. This is 30 G. I can't help myself. For my crew, every job's high stakes, and we can't afford to lose. This is Counting Cars. Today, Kevin and I are cruising around looking for some cars. It's one of my favorite things that we do. I like to just go cruise some neighborhoods, see what's going on out there. And this kind of stuff is really important to my business because this, uh, this is how we find cars. This is how we flip cars, how we make money on cars. And personally, it's an addiction. Can we stop and get coffee? Yeah. You got that, man. <laughs> Kevin's my right-hand man. We go back almost 20 years now. They always say that you shouldn't mix business with friendship, but it really works out just great. We do very good business together, but we remain the best of friends. Dude, 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 look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. That is beautiful. That's a, dude, spin around, spin around. We gotta catch this uh, guy. You got it. I'm serious, dude. Okay, all right, hold on. That thing was bad. I restore a lot of vehicles from the ground up, but sometimes I'm just looking for something that's a quick flip. Either it's done or it's close to done. And when I saw this Chevy, man, it just hit me right between the eyes. I knew if I could score this car for the right price, this thing would be an easy flip. We're catching up, we're catching up. Hey, can you pull over? Uh, Check out your car? No? Oh, <laughs> Dude, we got a red light. Pull up next to right, me again. All right, all right I'm gonna try this one. Hey, man. Nice car, man. Oh, thanks. What year is that? Uh, 39. 39? Yeah. You mind stopping for a minute? We take a look at it? Uh, I got You sure? Yeah. Man, that's, I don't know. We, should, we might want to talk. He's, he, he ain't happy about it, man. No deal? He, he ain't into it. I think he thinks we're a little bit crazy. Should we bag it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever been with Danny where he's given up on, on a car that he wants. He will fight tooth and nail to get a car. Oh, this guy's gonna get all freaked out. He's probably gonna drive to the nearest police station. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, check him out. He's trying to get away from <laughs> us. <laughs> okay, here's our chance, here's our chance. Just five minutes, just five minutes. Man, on a difficulty meter of chasing this guy down at a scale from one to 10, it was up there, man. I would put him at a solid eight. Thanks for stopping. I'm, my name's Danny. Shane. Not normal for people to do that, but kind of checked him out a little bit. He didn't look too strange and, you know, out of place, so it kind of eased my mind. Man, what a good looking car. What year is it? It's a 1939 Chevy. 39 Chevy. Yes. It's a business coupe. It's got a four-inch top top on it. It's gorgeous, and I like the angle on it, man. It's sweet. It's really cocky looking. I love the wheels. It took forever to find those. Oh, wow. 1939. I think gas was like 10 cents a gallon or something. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You had hair in 1939. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> this was the working man's car. When it was new, it cost about 650 bucks, which by today's standards would be about 10 grand. And between the Great Depression and World War II, that's how Chevy outsold Ford as America's number one leading auto manufacturer. They were making attractive cars at a very affordable price. And it's really interesting to see through all these years how they get transformed into these extremely high-tech hot rod machines. And where they came from to where they are now, it's kind of a cool vibe. Well, it's just beautiful. And yeah, I really appreciate you stopping, but I just have to ask, would you consider a cash offer of maybe somewhere around $40,000 for this car? I need to make this gentleman an offer that's high enough to get his attention, but still low enough for me to make a profit. You know, it's a fine line, and I gotta tread that very carefully. 
I don't think she really uh, could sell it. I put at least probably 60,000 in that car. My uh, fiance Tanya and I, we've went to so many car shows and had so many good memories. Finally a girl I met that really likes the hot rods and not me. That's a good girl. On, you know, she yeah. likes it, so. Oh, I thought you were she gonna say she it. doesn't like you, she just likes <laughs> the hot rods. I think that's mostly true. Grab Tanya and come down to the shop sometime. Come wander see around, what we see do. what we got going on down there. Yeah. Thank you for Thanks stopping. Thanks for stopping, Rob. Sorry to bother you. All right. <laughs> Good luck on your next Hope stop. May. Absolutely. <laughs> it's really hard to try to convince somebody to sell their car to you just right off the cuff like that. I mean, they didn't wake up this morning thinking, you know, I think I'm going to sell my car today. But I feel like he just might change his mind and decide to sell me this car one day. Sometimes it's just a game of patience. Just kind of lay back and wait. Man, that's like candy on wheels, man. Well, you get you get over girls quicker than you get over cars. <laughs> well, this is looking pretty tight, man. He got all the new bushings and everything in it, which is great. What's that? Check it out, man. Rick must have picked up the car. Oh, the one you want looked at? Yeah. Nice. Good morning, gents. Danny, my man. <laughs> you just made me so happy when you guys pulled up. <laughs> Good morning. You did it. You did it. You brought her home. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so the other day, Rick and Corey had me come check out a 1968 Mustang Fastback. Rick's got a great idea about turning this into like a Steve McQueen bullet replica. Corey, he's got other ideas about the car, but either way, I told him, if you can score this car for the right price, bring it back here to the shop, we can make it happen. So, uh, give me the good news, man. What'd you end up having to pay for? Pay 12 dollars for it. You did? Yeah. 12 dollars too much. <laughs> no, man, that was, I think that's a really good deal, man. So we're going to do the bullet, right? Yeah, we're gonna do the Steve McQueen special right here. I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm just a ridiculous Steve McQueen fan. I mean, he really is the coolest guy ever. I mean, this is what he drove in Bullet. And in the movie Bullet, they have the greatest car chase scene in the history of all movies. So I just want to make sure it looks just like the car in the movie. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, see, the thing about the Bullet Mustang, it was so wicked cool bad, but yet it was so completely understated under the radar. I mean, everything was was darkened up on that car, and all, all the flash was just was turned way down, and the car just was, was like, I've got an attitude. It's you, man. <laughs> This car can potentially be like a $50,000 car. Absolutely. How do we get there from this? <laughs> I just, the only thing this car has going for it is that 30 years ago in a movie, Steve McQueen drove the same car, but this ain't the car Steve McQueen drove. This should have gone away with cash for clunkers back in the day. I mean, someone should have traded this in on a Kia or something. <laughs> I can't visualize this car being cool. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be a lot of work. Yeah. The first thing we have to do is we've got to strip this car down to bare metal. The color, this whole thing is gonna be Highland Green, which actually was a factory color that Ford had back then. Okay. Maybe we just fix up this red interior a little bit, man. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> yeah, so we'll go all black inside, just the way it should be, all bone stock Mustang interior. And uh, we could save a bunch of this material and put it in Corey's car, because I know. <laughs> <laughs> so how much do you think it's going to cost me? Uh, that's always a good question, but I'm going to guess we're anywhere between 15 and 20 grand should get us that bullet Mustang out of this, I'm thinking. Okay. This car could be worth 40 or 50,000 when it's done. I'm already in at 12,500. If the restoration goes much more than 20,000, I could get screwed on this deal. All right, just try and keep it close to 15, man. <laughs> I'll stay on that as hard as I can. I estimated it was going to take about $15,000 to do this Mustang, but I'm just going to hope that uh, we can't get it done for that kind of money. Yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Got a large part of the team taking apart that 1968 Mustang Fastback to get that bullet project happening for Rick Harrison. But in the meantime, got a new client just walked through the door who's got a very interesting paint job he wants to put on his Harley Davidson. Hey man, how you doing? I'm Danny. Hey, I'm Bob. Bob, nice to meet you. This is a really cool scoop. 
Harley-Davidson Softtails are wonderful motorcycles. Softtails mimic the hardtail, but gives you a comfortable ride with a suspension. It's one of the coolest frames Harley-Davidson's ever done. How long have you been riding, Bob? I, I mean, I've been riding as long as I can remember. My dad rode, yeah. his dad rode, you know, and my kids ride. I like that. Do you have a vision for it yourself? I mean, what do you want to see? Over the last few years, I've really got an ex extensive collection of tattoos. I would really like to apply that to my bike. I like the way you're thinking. A paint job that's all 100% tattoo artwork, that's not a request you get every day, but I'm digging it. You've got a lot of stuff going on. Are we going to cover the entire bike yes. with it? It's sort of like a collage. Over the years, I've probably spent at least $10,000 on my body art. So what was the first piece that you got? Actually, this this skull, and it, it, it just started from there. All my tattoos are memories. I love it, man. You know, this everything is means fun. something. Hey, Shannon, do you know his horny mic around? Um, yeah, I think he is. This is something that he would just go nuts with, because, you know, he is nuts. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll get it. I've got an incredible airbrush artist here at the shop. Goes by the name of Horny Mike. And I think what he's going to bring to this project is really going to make it pop. Mike! What's going down? They call me Horny Mike for a reason. I put horns on everything. I put them on my jacket. I got a 25 of them molded into my bike. I'll put them on anything. And hey, it gets everybody horny. Why wouldn't I want to do it? Bob here is covered in ink, and he really wants to take that vibe and cover this bike. Tattoo the bike up? Tattoo the entire bike. Do we have to take naked pictures of you? Yeah, well, I mean, if that's I what you're I guess we got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to get reference. Right, right. <laughs> no, no, no. Can we put some horns on it? I don't know if I'd go that far, you don't but you know, go we'll crazy. discuss it. OK, Mike, he's back to the back. paint. You can tell me exactly which ones you truly want on there, which ones you All want more dominant. All, All of them? Yeah. All of them. Boy, but this is going to be a detailed paint job. Absolutely. This Thanks. is going to be crazy. Want to go take naked pictures? Let's do it. All right. What, you want to hold hands? No. <laughs> Where's hold the up. shop back at? Hold up, just hold. We ran into a little bit of a speed bump with this Mustang project. Whoever did this insane red velvet interior glued everything down, and it looks like they've screwed up most of the original panels underneath all of it. Ugh. I didn't expect this to be so bad. I can't believe that somebody glued all of this janky upholstery all over the console, all over the dash, all over everything. I'm afraid that all of these pieces are literally going to have to be replaced. Look at this. Yeah, this, this That's pad's done. That Holy is smoke. so nasty. <laughs> <laughs> ching, 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 ching. The dollars just keep adding up, brother. I'm <laughs> sorry, man. Scott is the money guy here. He keeps an eye on the books and the accounting, manages each project to make sure that we're making money on it and not losing. Scott's really good at his job. He can be a real <laughs> sometimes. This could be some late hours for me trying to find these parts. I'm with you. I think we're going to be a solid five grand in the interior, which we just don't have no more room in the budget. I think Danny needs an intervention on this one. He was way off. Just pass me your I personal know. credit card. We'll feel it. <laughs> well, let's always look for the positive. Man, I got 13 cents and 14 <laughs> dollars. Yeah, we put this towards the bill, man. 30 more cents right there on this side. <laughs> you keep digging for change, brother, man. Every penny counts. <laughs> Rick's one of my best customers, and I promised him that this project was going to be right around 15 grand. And it looks like it's going to be more close to $25,000. So I'm really going to have to try to figure out how I'm going to make this budget work. It's not going to be easy. We've been building Rick Harrison's 68 Mustang Fastback for three weeks now. It's been sandblasted, painted, and assembled to match every spec of the Mustang from the original Bullet movie. I promised Rick that I could do this for around $15,000, but due to the terrible condition of the interior in this car, I'm a little over 20 k in it right now. But you know what? I've got other business to attend to right now. Bob's in the bike shop. He's here to pick up his custom tattoo bike, and I can't wait to see the reaction. Oh, yeah. Get ready for this, brother. Get ready for this. me. <laughs> What's up, my uh, Check it out, brother.
Wow. <laughs> Look at that, man. That is awesome. I love it. Your ink all tells a story. Now your bike's telling the story. You know what, brother? That's exactly what I wanted. That is phenomenal. I mean, it's a piece of art. When I first saw the bike, one of the best ways to put it is like, remember being a kid, your, your first time in a candy store? It was just overwhelming. You know, sometimes I tell people, it's just got you written all over it. In this case, it's got you written all over it. <laughs> Holy <laughs> sh well, I'm glad you're happy, brother. Oh, I'm extremely happy. This ain't over yet, man. Check you out. Look at this. Oh, no. <laughs> See, now you got a nice helmet to match the bike. And of course, you got a nice riding vest to go with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that is awesome. <laughs> Here, you got to try it on. I'm making everybody horny. Absolutely, brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. I got horns. Now I'm horny Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was going to get horns somewhere. I'm just glad it wasn't on my bike. Well, first I impression, love the look. Bob. Like I said, <laughs> me. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's just you. <laughs> Mike, you came out swinging on this, brother. I tried. I tried. Mike put in a lot of hours on this thing. but it's About 80 hours on the whole bike. Yep. The tattoo bike wasn't very easy. It had a lot of detail going into it. First, we had to put a base coat on it. Afterwards, basically got to go through and airbrush in all the tattoos all over it. And you have to do this all by freehand. There's no stencils, there's no nothing. You do it all by eye. And there's not a lot of room for mistake. Oh, man, look at that one. That there's was, your original that, piece. Yeah, my first tattoo. There it is, brother. The skull work is phenomenal. There's even my koi. Yeah. That, that one's right here. I wish the tattoo looked that good. Sweet, huh? Yep. Everything is perfect. This is almost up there with having your first kid. You know? <laughs> Glad you're happy with Thank you. Thank you. Thank you there, Horny Mike. No problem. Now you're Horny Bob. Get on it and get the hell out of here. <laughs> this custom tattoo paint job was a lot of work, but that's what we do here. We take our customer's vision and make it into reality. I'm just glad that we can make it happen for him. Look at top. Nice, huh? <laughs> That's so badass. All right, so where are we at? It's top secret. <laughs> I'm just hoping you're not bringing me out here to bury me or bury the car. This is Vegas, you know. So you really did bring us out here to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> we've been working around the clock to get this bullet Mustang ready for Rick Harrison, and after everything we've been through with her, she's finally ready for the road. So I've got Kevin bringing Rick and Corey out to the desert so they can see what this baby can do. Seriously, Kevin, man, it's hot. What are we doing out here? It's a surprise. This literally looks like a road in a horror flick. Did you bring a gun with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's something coming. This definitely doesn't look like the piece of crap we bought. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's not the same car, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, man. <laughs> that thing is amazing. Beautiful, huh? It came out gorgeous. Oh, this is cool, man. I poured my heart and soul into it just like I was building it for myself. This is just absolutely amazing. Glad you dig it, brother. I'm looking at this car and everything about it's amazing. The paint job, the chrome, the wheels. I mean, this car used to look like a piece of <laughs> Now it's one of the prettiest cars I have ever seen in my life. Sexy, This huh? is amazing. What'd you do to the motor? Everything. Well, that's definitely not stock. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we took this car down to the last nut and bolt. It's a very, very happy motor, dude. That's amazing. Beautiful. Well, let me check out the interior, man, because I remember a lot of shag carpet and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of shag, a lot of velvet. You know, last time I saw this Mustang, the interior was completely destroyed. And for them to actually be able to make it look brand new, I mean, it's just amazing. Man, I'm telling you, Denny, I can't believe you were able to get it done. That car was a piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming it costs more than 15 grand to fix. Well, you know, well, let's talk about that later. Let's go for a drive first, man. <laughs> Before I tell Rick how much we ended up spending on the bullet, I want to get him out on the road so he can see just how bad this car is. Hopefully, he won't be too mad when he hears we went over budget. All right, do your thing. This thing is amazing. <laughs> this thing is literally the fountain of youth. 
Oh, look at me in the mirror. I'm 22 years younger. <laughs> Danny really did this car perfect. And the whole fact that it looks exactly like the car in the movie is a big deal. I'm a big Steve McQueen fan. I mean, he was the king of cool. This thing's amazing, dude. <laughs> I'm going to own this car for a long time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Look, I grew hair. <laughs> Danny told me he could get this thing done for $15,000. I think it's going to go way over that. Okay, so I'm imagining it cost more than the 15 to 20. It did. I definitely blew past our budget. I know we were we were trying to keep it as close as we could to 15. Uh, I've got, you know, 22 in it. I mean, honestly, if you would have told me 35, I would have thought that was a deal. But uh, hey, I don't gotta pay that. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're that happy, I'm that happy. Uh, I bought the car for 12.5. Danny only charged me 22 to fix it, which means I'm in the entire thing, 34.5, and literally the car's worth 50 or 60. Or the way I'm looking at it, I think the thing's priceless. Nice. Man, I'm really proud of our team. Yep. Rick yep. is happy, and we yep. even made a believer out of Corey. Yep. You hungry? I'm always hungry. I know you are. That's why I asked. Let's go get something to eat, man. I'm starving. On this episode of Counting Cars, I hook a bike of epic proportions. It's like a big steamroller. <laughs> Would you ever consider selling this bike? Kevin does damage control. Was that him doing a burnout in the car? Could have been anybody. And Scott gets some news that could ruin a perfect flip. These are the home runs we shoot for. We had the winner in lottery ticket. You know what he did? Here, you. Vegas is a gambling town. Most people bet with chips. I bet with rides. Look at this. And I always go all in. Wow. What would you take for this? I'm Danny, AKA The Count. And this is my all-star team. We find them, fix them, flip them, and sometimes I keep them. This is 30 G. I can't help myself. For my crew, every job's high stakes, and we can't afford to lose. This is Counting Cars. Today, we are lucky to be enjoying gorgeous cars right here at the umpteenth annual Viva Las Vegas Hot Rod Show. This is like heaven. This is what heaven's gonna be like, man. It's more than just a car show, it's a lifestyle show. The clothing, the hair, the music, this is a pleasure. Yo, Kev, where are you going, man? I'm going back to the rig. Aren't you going with me? Come here, come here, come here. Stick with what me. What do you man. got Trust in mind? Me. Trust me. Oh, here we go. Trust me. Have what? I ever let you down? Most of these cars are not for sale. The owners of these cars are guys that love their vehicles. They got too much invested in them. They're not looking to sell them. They're looking to enjoy them. That's why when I go to car shows, I don't even try to buy from the collectors. I go out and scour the parking lots. Let's see what some of the people drove here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, boy. Oh, dude, there's something turquoise over there. I thought turquoise was jewelry. No, it's a color. It's the color, man. It's a 58 Chevy. Do you have any sunscreen on you? Seriously. Like, I carried sunscreen with me, man. <laughs> My head's on fire right now. <laughs> it's cool, but it's four doors, you know? And if we're going to do something, let's do something with less doors. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's something out here. Come on, come on. It's that motorcycle right there. No, 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 no. No, it's that hood up right there. Oh, yeah, we got something here, Kevin. Older cars, and especially muscle cars or hot rods, they've got a sound. They've got a vibe. That's part of the whole persona of these vehicles. Hey, man, how you doing? Hey, hi. How are you? Nice car. I'm Charlie. Charlie, I'm Danny. Nice to meet you, brother. Pretty cool ride, man. What year is it? This is a 67. That's nice, man. GTO, man. I like these 67s, man. I think it was the prettiest body stuff. Do you know who uh, designed the, this thing? The guy that built the DeLorean. Remember the DeLorean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I dig this car, man. It's really, really cool. Well, I've had this car since the early 90s, and I love it, but I'm having uh, some problems. What's it doing? The transmission started going click, 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 click. I can't get it in gear. What's up with all that wiring, though? Well, that's that another wiring? one of my little deals. I started wiring it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm at a point now where I just, I'm tired of sticking more money into it. Yeah. You know? I know how you feel. There's nothing better than when someone's tired of dealing with their classic car, because I got no problems taking it off their hands. Charlie, I'm gonna help you out today, man. If you're interested in selling this, I'd like to talk to you about it. You know what? I will part with this car if I get 15 grand for it. This guy wants $15,000 for this GTO. It's got wires everywhere. The transmission is messed up. We don't know what's even wrong with that. But a few thousand dollars less, I'd be happy. How about this? I, you don't have to finish anything. I'll give you nine grand, and I'll tow it out of here. And you go home and have fun tonight. OK. I'll take the fenders, the hood, the front end off, <laughs> and you get $9,000 with a GTO. <laughs> no, no, seriously, split the difference with me. Let's say 12000 I'll give you 10 right now. For I'll come down 1000 you come up 1000 I'll meet you right there at eleven grand. You know what, Charlie? Let's do let's do eleven grand. Man, you got let's it. There's the title, grand. eleven thousand. That That's fair. Kevin, yeah, I got it. Handle this with yeah. him, and we'll make this thing happen, too. brother. All right, thank you, thank you, thank Charlie. You. I took a risk buying this GTO. Eleven grand was a fair deal, but I'm just hoping there's nothing major wrong with it, because this thing could be worth up to fifty grand. Look at that, man. 1967 GTO. I can't believe. I can't believe you. It's going going to the shop. Good looking yeah. car. I know Kevin's had a long day, but I spotted a mean looking Camaro a few days ago and there was nobody around to talk about it. We're on our way home from the car show, but after scoring that GTO, I'm feeling lucky. Oh, dude. What's up? I think you dozed off. Right <sighs> Good looking ride up here, brother, man. Come on. This just really caught my eye, man. 68. It's good looking, man. Body work looks great, man. Car looks straight. Yeah, there's no interior. I know. We'll go uh, see if anybody's home. All right, good luck with that. Danny just bought a GTO with a wiring and a transmission problem. And now he wants to buy a Camaro that has no interior. I just wish one time he'd buy a complete car. How you doing, brother? I'm Danny. Trevor. Trevor, it's very nice to meet you, brother. Absolutely. I was really kind of had my eye on that Camaro. I was wondering if maybe you'd be willing to tell me about it. Well, yeah, I was going to put it back together and try to get rid of it. Well, then we're talking to the right people. I mean, come on over here for a second, man. In my line of work, you have to be really aggressive to get the cool stuff. So knocking on people's doors is sometimes how I do business. Luckily, this guy's looking to sell his Camaro. I just might be his guy. It looks like you've done a lot of nice stuff to it already. Yeah, body work, paint. I mean, we got some motor work done to it. Uh-huh. After Ford sold about a half a million Mustangs after its debut in late 1964, Chevrolet answered the call with its Camaro. And this 1968 is an SS, which stands for Supersport. The Supersports came with more power, heavy-duty suspension, bigger brakes, just all that extra styling cues to make it a really badass Camaro. If you really wanted to go fast back in the day, this was the car to get. Do you mind if I take it for a spin up the road? I'll leave you Kevin as collateral. <laughs> I'll be right back. Let's see if it's got any power. <laughs> Was that him doing a burnout in the car? Could have been anybody. This 68 Camaro is a dream to drive. We're going to need to find an all new interior dial in a couple of very minor mechanical issues on it, and I should be able to get close to 30 grand for this car. So I'm really hoping to score it for under $15,000 just to play it safe. All right, you're looking to sell, and you're serious. I'm looking to buy, and I'm serious. I will go to the shop. I will bring you back 11 grand today, $100 bills. You gotta do a little better. Where would you go with it? Lewis, I'll go 14,000. I tell you what, man, take, take 13 for it cash today, and we'll all be happy. It'll be out of your hair. All right, deal. Done deal. Done deal. Brother, call Scott, Kevin, okay. and uh, and tell him that we're coming back. 
Man, a Camaro and a GTO in one afternoon? It's a pretty solid day. Scott, get some $100 bills ready. We're going to need 13000 I picked up this really sweet GTO convertible for 11 grand. She's got some wiring and some transmission issues. And I'm really hoping that's not gonna cost too much because I stand to make a really good profit on this. I pray it's all good under here. Wow. Dude. Put some money under here. We've got some real nice stuff in here. Fully adjustable suspension. That's race, race car stuff right there. Yeah, man. These these trailing arms, yeah. all aftermarket, the sway bar. I didn't expect this. This thing is tight and right. I like it. I like it. I dug this GTO from the get-go, but now that I've had a little time to spend with it, I found out she's already loaded with a whole bunch of high-performance parts, which only means she's going to be a lot more valuable in the long run. We are gonna make a huge profit on this car. I can see it. What's up, homie? Viva cars? Yeah, yeah, no, this is the Viva car, man. Get out of I am not kidding you, I'm not kidding you. This car is nice. So what are we thinking? Let's, let's cap it up real quick so I know what kind of budget we're rocking. Well, you know, to be honest with you, probably the worst thing mechanically is the wiring harness is a train wreck. Let's just rip it out. All right. Other than that, we've got to hook up the transmission linkage, and then the car should be running and driving. What are you not selling me? We're getting too lucky on this one, and this... I, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm really feeling great. What color? That's the question. When, when I see this car and I look at it, I'm seeing blue. Nice. I just think the lines of this car will really make that paint pop. That paint will just really look sexy. All right. Good job. Thank you, brother. Good Appreciate job that, on man. this just... one. When I found out we bought a GTO, I, mean, I was like, GT, whoa. Man, what a home run. I figured we'll put about 22, 25 grand into it. It'll be worth 50 grand all day long. I love it. That's the I want him to do every day. I'm not going to call you the Terrible Twins no more. It's my pleasure. Thank you. No problem. I think yeah. I'm keeping it. Dude, uh, I, only, I didn't have to buy rims. Uh, <laughs> dude, the rims are beautiful. What's that? The rims are beautiful. I, I think I'm going to keep this car. When Danny finds a cool car, chances are he's going to keep it, especially if he doesn't have one. Scott, on the other hand, is going to be pissed. This is a 1967 GTO convertible. Right. I have a huge auto collection, and I don't have one of these. It's been known as a significant muscle car for years, yeah. and yeah. it's got a lot of nice Dude, stuff. I, 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 I'm yeah. I'm blaming you. I know. I know. Stop patting yourself on the back. I know you got to grow. Absolutely, man. Stop patting yourself on the back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I ain't telling him nothing. No. I've got the team hard at work fixing this Camaro. And if we can get the interior put in before the end of the week, I stand to be able to flip it for a pretty sweet paycheck. But I've been working around the clock, so now I think it's time for me to go relax a little bit. Man, oh man, oh man. Harley-Davidson came out with this baby in 1990. They call it the Fat Boy because it sits so low and wide. It's so badass, even Arnold rode one in Terminator 2. I got to tell you, I've never seen anybody running a front tire like this. <laughs> That's actually 18 inches by 7 and a half. You're running an 18 by 7 wow. wheel on your front? Correct. That's on crazy. my front end, yeah. That's way <laughs> That's not something tall. you see every day, man. No, it is pretty unique. I bought my 95 Harley Fat Boy, brand new. Did a lot of customizing on it. I had to cut the frame up a little bit to get the big tires under it. How does this whole bike feel when you're riding it? It's like a big steamroller. <laughs> it's a joy to ride. It really is. It's a lot of fun. Man, how big are the tanks on this? That's seven gallons. Seven gallons? Seven gallon Lord. stretch tanks, yeah. You could tour this if you need to. Yeah. <laughs> they call me the in-flight tanker because I fill up my buddies when they run out of gas out in the middle of nowhere. 
The seven gallon gas tank is an interesting feature on this bike. It almost doubles the size of most motorcycle gas tanks. With Harleys getting between 30 and 35 miles to the gallon, you can get from Vegas to LA on one tank. What's the chances of you let me take this thing around the block? Boy, I don't know about that one. <laughs> uh, maybe if you let me take that truck for a spin, huh? You're a smart man, Dion. <laughs> we work something out, maybe? I'll tell you what, man. Sweet. Maybe we'll do this another time. <laughs> I've got a few rules in my life. I don't do casinos. I don't do shows on the strip. And more importantly, I don't let anyone drive my cars. I got to ask you a question, or else I'm sure. not going to be able to sleep tonight. But would you ever consider selling this bike? No, no, not this one. Labor of love right here, let me tell you. You're keeping this one forever. This one forever. Man. When you build your own bike or whatever it may be, it becomes a part of you. It's my pride and joy. <laughs> Take care. All right, you too. Harley Davidson is by far the most successful American-made motorcycle ever. And that's because they're bad. That was cool. The Camaro is done, and with her new interior, she just looks beautiful. We've had a lot of interest in her, but because she's a bit of a higher-end restoration, it's a little out of reach for the average buyer. Scott's found us a very serious collector, and he's here now to look at it. I hate to see her go, but that cash is for the GTO. <laughs> have you ever had an old Camaro before? I have not. It's really beautiful. You're going to like it. I love them. One of my last adventures is to invest in the first generation Camaros. That's my dream, that's my lifestyle. There it comes. How does that look to you, man? Oh my God, that's absolute. awesome. She's beautiful. Just awesome. It sounds good, like it should. This car is beautiful. Super, super. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> If you're looking for an old Camaro, you're not gonna find anything nicer than this. It's rock solid, all the body lines are totally straight. This car's been nut and bolt restored top to bottom. My guy has installed an entire era correct interior. I'm talking seats, carpet, door panels, you name it. It's a brand new 68 Camaro. It's ready to go. What this needs is somebody like yourself to just enjoy it. You got an awesome car here. Give her a start. Yeah, man. All right, I'll do that. <laughs> you look good in there. I feel good in there. <laughs> How can you not when you're sitting in this car, right? What do you think? Ah, very, very sweet. I'm very interested in this car. And let's come up with some numbers on this. You got it. I picked this car up for around 13 grand, and between the interior and some finishing touches, I had to put about another eight grand in it. I'd like to get about 30 to 35 for it. That would give me a nice profit of around 10 grand. And maybe that'll keep Scott from freaking out if I decide to keep that GTO. As you can see, she's really brand new. I think I'm being reasonable asking 40 grand for this car. I'm thinking more like 30,000. <laughs> wow. Well, I don't think I'd go down that far, but I, I, I got a little bit of room. How about 36? I'll split the difference with you. I'll give you $35,000. Max, you just bought yourself a really nice car. I'm very happy. <laughs> That's what I like to see. Thank smile. you. This Camaro was in pretty good shape when we picked it up. That makes it the perfect car for a quick flip. It wasn't that hard to get her in great condition, and we made a nice, healthy profit of about $14,000. In my book, that's a great day. Pleasure doing business with you. Right back at you. Come on in, sir. Home run of all home runs. Under 30 days, and I'm thinking I'm going to make 30 G's profit. Rolly, baby, you better get every freaking spot on this one. You know what? Why don't you grab a rack, too, and help me out? Thank you. I don't ask you to answer the phones. I'm not washing the car for yeah, you either. Yeah, then quit rushing me. Give me a little more time so I get the job done right. When it comes to this GTO, I just can't get the smile off of my face. This car has gone together like a dream. Record time. And turned out it had a performance suspension. That's just more money in our pocket. And I already got a buyer. Danny's about to see the GTO for the first time. And if he approves, I'm going to sell this baby. Come on, baby. Come on. That's what I'm talking about right there, man. 
Man, I'm telling I you. I mean, you can see the blue ice pearl. It turns almost purple in some light. Yeah, it's amazing. The paint job came out smooth. Rewired the car, everything went great. I haven't had one problem finding a part for this car. 500 horses on a budget. I thought we were gonna be 22, 25. I came in about 18, nine. I'm asking 55. I think I'm gonna get it all day long. I sent the customer just three pictures. He picked up the phone and turned around and called me back. This is a home run. He's talking 55 grand. He's staying up at one of the casinos right now waiting for us. Oh, really? Yeah, we're ready to go. You gonna take it over there? Hell yes. Well, let me go. What's the, what's the golden rule of sales? There's only one salesman and one owner. Oh, dude, I ain't saying anything. <laughs> I just want to drive it. Okay, you know, I want, okay. I want to see how it feels. It just looks beautiful, man. I like everything on it. Good luck with everything, Scott. Hey, who needs luck? Hey, don't make me <laughs> my pants. This car is really nice. I mean, she just came out so beautiful, and she drives Ooh. so nice. Let me just listen to that. Nice, throaty sound. Happy car, man. Let's get this money. Let's get this money. This is going to make our quarter look amazing. There's only one problem I'm having with this whole thing. What do you mean? There's a big problem with this car. What are you talking about? Everything's great on this, dude. I drove it by. This is great. I know. I think I'm going to keep it. Just hang on. Are you serious? <laughs> dude, this is 30 Gs. Pull over. Pull over, come on, now pull over for a minute. This is 30 Gs in under 30 days. I got you. I'm this listening. is a car that went together like it was, it just wanted to be together. It does, that's we exactly right, We never get right, that Mike. lucky. We're almost no money in this car. I know. Why well, it makes the most sense for me to keep it. No, that's what makes the most sense to sell it. I don't know what the Danny's thinking about the GTO. When else do you get a chance to get 35 grand in under a month? We had the winner in lottery ticket. You know what he did? Here, you. What's the use of getting buyers for if we're not going to sell it? How Pissed is what I am. Ridiculous. You better call that guy, man. We ain't gonna make it. How the f do you ever expect me to, to do my job if you're gonna do hey, like this? Listen, let me tell you something. These man. are the home runs we shoot for. I know, I know. These are the home runs. But the good part about this it. This is why we're in business. What are you thinking? Scott can say whatever he wants, but this GTO convertible is gorgeous, and she's coming home with me. We had a serious buyer, I get it. But if he's that serious, we'll just find him another GTO and build it the exact way he wants it, and that way we'll both be happy. I can't believe I just called a guy and threw away 30 grand. Now, on the other side of that coin, Scott, as you sit in this car going down the road, it's an awfully nice car to keep, ain't it? Dude, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. You better pray to God Kevin didn't know, because I'm going to get in his ass. Oh, yeah. You might have had some information on this. I don't know. <laughs> on this episode of Counting Cars, we double down on a killer custom hot rod. How do you keep this twin engine car on the road? Carefully. <laughs> My detailer, Rolly, lets loose in the shop. Rolly, what are you doing? Good thing I cannot bust the window in it. Go to my office and get ready for a piss test. <laughs> and morning, Mike, and I tear up the streets of Vegas in a vintage dune buggy. Let's get out of here before the cops come. Yeah. <laughs> Vegas is a gambling town. Most people bet with chips. I bet with rides. Look at this. And I always go all in. Wow. What would you take for this? I'm Danny, AKA The Count. And this is my all-star team. We find them, fix them, flip them, and sometimes I keep them. This is 30 G. I can't help myself. For my crew, every job's high stakes, and we can't afford to lose. This is Counting Cars. How's it going? Good up the afternoon. Nice ride. Thank you very much, sir. What year is it? It's a 31. Nice. What's going on? We need to make this nicer. Certainly, we can help with that. Let me go get Danny. Perfect. I'm Roly. I'm from Hungary. I'm the detailer here at Kant Customs. I just can't stand when a car is dirty. I just clean everything. Danny, I got a customer here like to talk to you. 
He has a 31 hot rod. A dirty? A, a dirty, dirty one. 30, 31. 31, yeah. <laughs> 1931 hot rod. Okay. It's red okay. with the flames. It looks cool, but he wanted it to look cooler and nicer and look, better. Look at what? Nice. nice. <laughs> Rolly's got that language barrier, so he comes in, tries to tell you something, and you're like, I need that two or three times. It wouldn't be a day without messing with my accent. <laughs> I thought it was coming out to look at a dirty one something. I didn't know who, who was dirty and who was the one. I'm not sure. Anthony, this is Danny. Pleasure. Check you out. That's you like? sweet. I you love like? it. The windshield is, in my opinion, is one of the prettiest things on the car. It's an old Duvall windshield is what they call it, where it's split like that and laid back in an angle. It's a gorgeous windshield. Thanks. It's the definition of a hot rod, man. Hot rods from the early 30s is really where they're at. And this car falls right in the middle of it, man. So how rare these cars are? Well, I tell you, you know, interestingly enough, this was an everyday man's car. They were extremely inexpensive, and wow. a ton of them were built. You could buy one of these for about 385 bucks. The irony of the whole thing is now, this many years later, these cars are very expensive and are very sought after. Ford found a great way to mass produce these cars. They were the pioneers in the assembly line. And from 1927 to 1931, they sold about four and a half million of these Model A's. Do you have a vision for it yourself? I mean, what do you want to see? The 31 Ford is in dire straits of some TLC and some love. It's been sitting for a long time, and the flames are getting a little old. I got gotcha. you. Know? There's one little thing that bothers me. Uh, that? I know you love the Duval windshield. Yes. But my height, the way I sit here, that's right where my eyes sit. Like right there. It's so annoying. It's right in your line of sight. Right in my line of sight. I'm just nonstop doing this kind of thing. Uh, that's no fun. No, no. You should put the pillow on the seat or something. <laughs> <laughs> we like to joke around. <laughs> oh, no, well. This Duval windshield has got to be one of my favorite parts of this 31. I think they're just beautiful. And we got to figure out how we're going to make this work, because I don't want to lose that windshield. But I also agree with Anthony. Driving around and not being able to see, that's a bad thing. Brother, I love it. Now, the scary thing is the budget, 15000 But OK. We would love to do this, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand dirty. I think this is Scott's house right here on the left. It looks like Amityville Horror. Well, I can imagine living with Scott would be like Amityville Horror. Spooky. Uh-huh. Today, Kevin and I are out cruising one of my favorite neighborhoods. This place is a gold mine. Every time I come out here, I always find something cool, and I rarely ever leave empty-handed. Got some up here on the right. Yeah. It's an old Ford the Galaxy. Oh. Oh. Dude, I know you're gonna taste that attack. You gotta be kidding me. Oh my god. I've never seen anything like that. Uh, dude, not like that. He's got two motors on that car. Pull up one side. I'll get it over. Talk to this guy. Wow. Hey, brother. Beautiful. I like it. Hey, we're car guys. Do you mind if we talk to you about it? Is that all right? OK, appreciate it. Cool. Thank you. Danny and I have been doing this for 10 years. I've never seen anything like this Model T. I am totally blown away. Dude, this is insane. Yeah, you oh could say that. my what gosh. What is this? About two years ago, I just came up with the idea to put two motors in a hot rod. It's probably the only one of its kind in the world, as far as I know. I've yet to see another one like it. It actually runs on both engines at the same time. And I know a number of other people have tried it, and uh, it hasn't always exactly been successful. And I think that in itself is somewhat of an engineering feat. That's un unbelievable. How do you keep this thing on the road? Well, carefully. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some twin engine cars before, and it seems to me the biggest problem that, that guys have had trying to make them work is having them work together, connecting them without the two engines destroying each other. How do you keep them synced up together and happy? It's got massive steel cogs and uh, custom-built sprockets and a carbon fiber belt that's virtually indestructible. I kind of engineered it all, put it all together, and uh, bingo, it works. That's yeah. pretty amazing. That's Danny. impressive, you man. You can put this all together like this. Danny, will you buy this for me? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe how much customizing and modifications that Gordon did. I wouldn't even begin to know what something like this is worth. If somebody said, I have to have this, what kind of number would you put on this? 
You'd have to really, really twist my arm to even get me to think of a good number. So somebody came with a hundred grand. I don't think so. Hundred and a half? No. Yeah. No. I'm one of these guys that doesn't sell. He just keeps buying. Brother, <laughs> you and I need to talk. I think this guy Gordon and I have a lot in common. You know, one car is never enough type of thing. Uh, what else have you got? What have you got at home? Well, I got everything from hot rods and muscle cars all the way up to Lamborghinis. Were we separated at birth or something? <laughs> <laughs> you got anything for sale? Well, we might be able to find you something. Uh, Do you mind bringing a couple of lunatics to your house uh, so we can yeah, see you your guys stuff? come over. Yeah. Seriously? Sweet. Can I ride with you? Let's do it. You bet. Kevin, would you mind grabbing Good the luck. truck, man? I will. Thanks, man. I never get to go for a ride anyway. That's true, man. But I always tell you how much fun it is, don't I? Yep. But I get the feeling with this guy, I think I've hit the jackpot. <laughs> Me and my new buddy Gordon, we're cruising back over to his house to see if he's got anything over there I might be able to work a deal on. What else you got hiding back here? Oh, all kinds of little goodies. Old Challenger here? Yep, 73 Dodge Challenger. As you can see, I've seen better days. Yep. Now, there's one you might be able to twist my arm on. <laughs> oh, what you got hiding over here? 56 Bird, right? Yes, sir. Man. It's an original color. Original color, but the green and the white interior. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen one like this. Yeah, according to the uh, T-Bird Registry Office, it was possibly the only one ever made. Unbelievable. Gordon's got some really cool and some extremely rare cars in his collection. There's no way I'm leaving this place empty-handed. 79 Z28. Is this one for sale? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. 1957 Chevy. Forget about it, guys. Ain't for sale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. 69 Corvette Stingray. Good Lord. This is one of my favorite cars in the world. Tell me about her. Well, it's a uh, factory four-speed. <sighs> Love it. It'll probably just about every option that came out in the time. Uh, Gordon, how about let me haul this out of here? I'll give you, I'll give you fifteen thousand dollars in cash. Man, you're gonna have to dig a little deep on that. You know, it's gonna take triple that. Really? I think you invited us over here to just make me feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> Gordon's collection is sweet. Unfortunately for me, he knows what they're all worth. If I can't get it cheap, then I'm not gonna make any money here. There is one thing out here, though, that has been catching my eye we haven't talked about yet. Is that a really an old Myers Manx? Absolutely. Yeah, the doom buggy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could get seriously interested in talking to you about that one. Dune buggy craze was huge in the 70s, and Myers, man, Myers had the corner on the market yep. because they had the cool body. I mean, this is basically a Volkswagen, is what this is. It's a whole Volkswagen pan with the engine and transmission and, and, and suspension, and everything off a of VW bug. And they would they would throw away the bodies, and they would refit them with this. You didn't even see the best part. Look at this. <laughs> the key rabbit's with a foot. rabbit's foot. Uh, the rabbit used that's to be... 70s. That's, that's absolutely, 70s. man. Here in Vegas, doom buggies are huge. They were made to run in the sand, and we got plenty of that here. So I know if I can score this thing for the right price and bring it back to that proper 70s vibe, I should be able to make some good money on this buggy. You've turned me down so many times, I'm gun-shy right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, pop a number out. Would you take $3,000 cash? Gonna have to double it. How about meeting me halfway at 45? You know, I kind of had a funny feeling you had to come back with that number. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was thinking more like 55. You know what, man? Just because I'm scared to talk anymore about this, I will buy this right now, $5,500 cash, if you'll grab the title. You got to do it. I love it. I love it. Man, I haven't worked this hard since I don't know when. <laughs> You're a tough one. Walking out of here today with a dune buggy was the last thing I expected. But I really think I scored today. I think with a little bit of TLC, this thing could easily be worth up to $15,000. And frankly, I can't wait to test it out. Roland, do me a favor, hop in here for a second, and I'll show you something. And just, and just sit in it normal. You see how this is in your way when you're looking down the road? It's eye level. Absolutely. 
With Anthony Cool's 31 Coupe, we have a little bit of a challenge. His eyes are hitting the top of the windshield when he's driving. So within his budget of $15,000, we need to figure out how to make sure he's looking through the windshield and not over it. What are you doing? <laughs> Holy, what are you doing? Let's try imagine cool myself in this car. How would you sit and... <laughs> Good thing I cannot bust the window in it. <laughs> Go to my office and get ready for a piss test. <laughs> <laughs> Holy, I mean, you gotta settle down a little bit. But you know what's interesting about him trying to feel cool in this car? What's he doing? He's getting down in it. So if we change this seat and drop it down, that'll fix the windshield situation, the steering wheel position situation. The simple thing to do is we got to lower the seat in this car, you guys. And plus, we got a couple little issues up front, too, you know, where the fender got hit. So we've got to repair all that. When this car leaves, it's got our name on it, man. So it's got to be cool, man. I'm going to let you guys wrestle this Here, one let's out. Let's go. I'm it's piss test time. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool, man. So earlier, Danny picks up this Myers Doom buggy. It's a pretty sweet little ride. So we decided to take it out on the road for a little test drive, getting some dirt in the tires. I don't see us doing much off-roading. Well, there's a little we can do. We should do it, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little dune buggies like this, they are a blast to drive. But it's time to get back to the shop, tear this thing down, and start making it wicked. <laughs> hey, sweet. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> I was wondering what you <laughs> out here think this is a drive through I jump out to say hi, but I can't get out of it. <laughs> Don't get out because you're taking it back. <laughs> no way, man. We got some money right here, baby. How much did you pay for this? Danny's got a beautiful wife at home. But here at the shop is an ugly fat wife. Her name is Scott. Why are your glasses dirty? <laughs> what the hell are you two been doing? We had to test it. <laughs> yeah, He's got the man to here. He did it again. You got it here. Absolutely. I love it. See, he knows about it. This dune buggy is way cool, and the fact that it's street legal, that just makes it twice as much fun. I'm going to put a very authentic 70s style paint job on this car, take it back to that retro vibe it should be, and I'm going to turn this $5,500 investment into a $10,000 profit. This is a moneymaker, Scott. This is. What'd you spend? I think $2,500. You are both lying. I'm going to go look at the computer, and I swear, I'm going to whip all three of your $2,750. What'd you do? Tell me what the How's the computer going, buddy? <laughs> I'm going the other way. I'm going to whoop your ass. Kevin, hey, especially you. Tell me right now. <laughs> Tony, Mike, and I came up with a great plan for the Manx Doom Buggy that I picked up. We've already tweaked the engine, and they're putting the finishing touches on the new paint job right now. How's it going, Ryan? I got a surprise for you. Yeah? I'm doing some lace. No lace. We got a big girl's stockings last night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ryan. I do a lot of custom painting around here. The other day, Danny came to me with this 70s to 60s era theme that he wanted me to go with had to be a lace technique. This is a dying art. You don't see this very often, man. In the 60s, if you didn't have lace, you just you weren't anybody. Just take, right. that, take that home. Right. Dude, look at this. It's a great pattern, man. It's beautiful. It does look cool. It does look real cool. Tell me your stuff, right? I think that's good. Yeah, you know, I want to see under. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See? See? You have to agree that's cool. No, you just might have got a little cooler in my See? book. This is slick. It's beautiful. Ryan, nice job on that, man. I rock. <laughs> <laughs> We've been working on this 1931 Ford hot rod for days. We've repainted the entire car, got rid of those horrible flames that were on it, fixed all the body damage, modified the seat, and it's finally finished. Now, Anthony just got here, and I cannot wait to show him what we've done. Think you're going to dig it, man. I can't wait, dude. Rolly, bring this thing out, man. Ah. Oh, man. Look at that. 
God damn. <laughs> You've outdone yourself, man. Holy crap. <laughs> All those flames gone. Those cheesy cartoon flames are MIA. When it first came out and that sun hit it, the paint was just glowing off the car. It was red before, but it just didn't have that appeal before. Now it's just sexy. Love the interior. Turn out gorgeous. Glad you dig it. You know, we added some of the stitching to match with the outside of it, but not overdone, not too much. We had that damage on the on the right front, all of that repaired, cleaned up. You remember what you wanted to your car? You wanted it to be nicer. Absolutely. So it is nicer, right? Oh, very much nicer. <laughs> you know how you were having the issue of, of your line of sight? You were sitting up so high, yeah. you didn't like the windshield. Yeah. And to me, this Duvall windshield, man, it's like jewelry. It's just yeah, beautiful. Yeah. We polished it all up. There's no way in the world I wanted to get rid of the Duvall windshield, so I want to get your butt closer to the ground. I'm getting my butt closer Slip to the ground. Slip in there. Oh, I'm going to get my butt closer. Oh, uh, wow. Uh -huh. oh. Get down in the car now. Oh. Hey, windshield. See, but that is much <laughs> better, man, because now, now when you look at the road, you're looking through the windshield. What a difference. Wow. Now, the scary thing is the budget. I said, you know, 15000 Yep. How'd we do? We did right on the money, man. For you, we take care of business. That's... She stayed right in budget. Beautiful. Uh, and you know, it, there was some other stuff. It wasn't just cosmetic. We took care of a lot of wiring issues, the fuel injection issues, some suspension stuff. All fit in the budget. The interior. You're I mean, ready to rock, yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. You should amazing, be able to yeah. rock and roll this thing all the time, man. Just get in it and go. That's why I bring it to you. Thank That's why you. I, bring it to I appreciate you. that. Yeah. Well, let's go take care of a little business with Scott. All right, works for me. Well, when I brought the car in, it needed some TLC. We went from TLC to you know showroom quality. I'm gonna go for a cruise down the strip and enjoy that thing. So, you know, a couple days ago, Danny bought a Myers Minx from Extreme Car Collector. It's a cool little thing, but I think he overspent. We're $5,500 in purchase, $2,500 in upholstery. I really think this one's going to take a bath on once again. Hey, Danny, this is Shannon. Shannon. He's coming to look at the hey, dune buggy. How you doing? So you're in the mood for a little open-air dune yeah. buggy vibe. Yeah, I love anything to do with off-road, so I want to check it out. Why don't we go out front? Great. Bring it right out. Great. Rolling, brother. Bring that baby out here, man. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> My God. Now I know why I drive a van. <laughs> Check it out. Everything we did with this was 100% authentic 70s. I just wanted to keep it true to its era. This paint is all like you've That's seen in the amazing. 70s, man. We even did some old lace, beautiful. you know, paint in it. It's all old school Totally 70s, justice. Man. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> It's all really a unique car. That motor looks great. She runs great. She drives great. It's just uh, simple and clean and correct. Yeah. Well, if it runs as good as it looks, man, it's going to be pretty nice. Well, let's take it for a drive. All right. Sounds good to me. Scott, we'll be back. Good luck. Be safe. When I first saw the Minx, obviously, the way it looked, the color green and then the sparkles was just amazing. You don't see them very often, especially in that kind of condition. So it's just awesome to see it. It feels comfy in here. It feels really back. good. Let's go check this out. <laughs> It's great. Pretty tight, man. Everything works really good on her. Stiff as can be, man. Yeah. It's part of it. You feel everything about it, yeah. you know? So you're an off-road guy? Oh, off-road total. I've raced off-road for a lot of years, and my off-road car is strictly desert. So to have something that's off-road that I can drive on the street, it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. I'm glad you really like it. Really nice. I love this little car. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. You don't see a lot of them. How was that? It was great. It was great. Thank you, man. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Hey, how'd you like it? I love it. Let's talk some numbers and let's get this done. Well, before you say a number, let's see how good of a test drive it really was. Okay. What do you think, Shannon? I would like to stick around 18. I was soft. Let's go 20. Let's go 20. We got a clean title, the whole thing. She's ready to go. Well, 18 is what I was wanting to spend, but it was nice it is. 20's a deal. Right. Shannon, you rock, right. brother. You're Thank you very much. I'm happy. I really am. We just sold the Doom buggy. We made 12 Gs. Hey, nice profit. Really was. Got let's it. go do okay. some paperwork. No, this is a great day that for us. That was good. I thought it was just a toy. Danny knew it was something special. Nine times out of 10, I'm 100% right. But he'll use this one to stick me every time he does something to say, look, I was right on this one. <laughs>